Hello, welcome to Storytime. My name is Lee, and I am one of the librarians here at the Community Library. I do story time every week. I record them, and I'm so glad that you tuned in today. Thank you for joining me. This week, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Usually, I pick a theme, and I do have a theme this week, but I'm going to read all three books by the same author. It's the person who wrote the book and the same illustrator, the person who drew the pictures. And um, those books are on ecology. And that is a fancy word for talking about nature. It's sort of the, um, just think about outside. It's all of the trees and plants and animals and bugs that all live together. And that is an environment or ecology. So we're gonna read some books today about that. Um, there was a program for grown-ups that is still available if your grown-up person might want to watch it about ecology. We had a speaker last night, she was here, and it kind of inspired me to do a similar program for all of you. So welcome, I'm so glad you're here. So let me show you the first book that I'm going to read. This one is called Over and Under the Snow. It is written by Kate Messner and it's illustrated by Christopher Silas Neal. And these books are all published by Chronicle Books. All right. Over the snow I glide into woods, frosted, fresh, and white. Over the snow, a flash of fur, a red squirrel disappears down a crack. Where did he go? Under the snow, Dad says. Under the snow, a whole secret kingdom where the smallest forest animals stay safe and warm. You're skiing over them right now. Over the snow, I glide past beech trees rattling leftover leaves and strong silent pines that stretch to the sky. On a high branch, a great horned owl keeps watch. Under the snow, a tiny shrew dodges columns of ice. It follows a cool tunnel along the moss out of sight. Look, Dad says, tracks. Tracks always tell a story. Over the snow, a deer has crossed our path. Deep hoof prints punch through the crust up the hill under a tree. An oval of melted snow tells the story of a good night's sleep. Under the snow, deer mice doze. They huddle up, cuddle up against the cold in a nest of feathers and fur. See the little deer mice down there? Over the snow, I climb, digging in my edges so that I don't slide back down. Under the snow, voles scratch through slippery tunnels, searching for morsels from summer feasts. Over the snow, I swoosh, down, down, faster, faster, down, faster, faster, Whoa! Under the snow, a snowshoe hare watches from a shelter of from the shelter of a spruce. Almost invisible, she smooths her fur, a coat of winter white. Do you see the rabbit, the hare? I know she blends right in. Over the snow I glide, past reeds where tadpoles play tag in springtime. Under the snow, fat bullfrogs snooze. They dream of sun warm days back when they had tails. Over the snow, I stand and stare, little mountains in the marsh. Under the snow, beavers gnaw on aspen bark, settled in for supper. Can they hear my tummy rumbling too? Over the snow, stop, a sound. We stand like statues carved in ice till a bushy-tailed fox steps from the thicket, tips his ears to the ground, listens, 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 and leaps. Out onto the snow after an invisible dinner. 
His paws scratch away to find the mouse he heard scritch, scritch, scratching along underneath, under the snow. Do you see the little mouse that he heard? Over the snow I glide, a full moon lights my path to supper. Under the snow, a chipmunk wakes for a, for a meal. Bedroom, kitchen, hallway, his house under my feet. Over the snow I climb one last hill. Bonfire smoke rises. Warm hands, hot cocoa, hot dog sizzling on pointed sticks. Under the snow, a black bear snores, still full of October blueberries and trout. Look at that bear hibernating. Over the snow, the fire crackles and sparks shoot up to the stars. I lick sticky marshmallow from my lips and lean back with heavy eyes. Shadows dance in the flames. Under the snow, a queen bumblebee drowses away December, all alone. She'll rule a new colony in the spring. Do you see the queen bee? Over the snow, I glide home on tired legs. Clouds whisper down feathery, soft snowflakes. Under the covers, I snuggle deep and drift into dreams of cuddling deer mice and slumbering frogs, hungry beavers and tunneling voles, drowsy bears and busy squirrels, and the secret kingdom under the snow. The end. These books are really neat because at the back, they talk about all of the animals and the things that you read about in the book. So there's a lot more information. All right, so that is the first book. The second book I'm going to read is called Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt. Up in the garden, I stand and plan, my hands full of seeds and my head full of dreams. Spring sun shines down to melt the sleepy snow. Wind whistles through last year's plants and mud sucks at my rain boots. It's not quite time, Nana says, down in the dirt, things need to dry out and warm up. What's down there, I ask? <laughs> Look at all those creatures down in the dirt. Down in the dirt is a whole busy world of earthworms and insects, digging and building and stirring up soil. They're already working down in the dirt. Up in the garden, we snap brittle stalks, scoop rusty, rustly armfuls, and wheel away weeds for the chickens while they squabble and scratch and spread compost over the soil. Down in the dirt, pill bugs chew through last year's leaves. I give a gentle poke. They roll up tight and hide in pla plated suits of armor, roly-poly round. See them right there? Up in the garden, it's time to plant. I trail a furrow with my finger and sprinkle seeds in a careful row. Give them a drink, Nana says. We pat them down to snuggle in the dark. Down in the dirt, a tomato hornworm rests, waiting for wings and the leaves where she'll lay her eggs. Up in the garden, carrot plants sprout, pea blossoms bloom, wafts are on the prowl, and honeybees visit 
legs loaded with pollen. I weed and wilt in the sun so strong, even Nana looks for shade. Down in the dirt, earthworms tunnel deep. I'm jealous of their cool, damp, dark. Up in the garden, rain shower, Nana turns the hose on me. <laughs> I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in Nana's rain. Down in the dirt, water, water soaks deep. Roots drink it in, and a long-legged spider still walks over the streams. Do you see the spider? Look right there. There's so many creatures. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs feast on aphids. Nana crunches green beans. I bite a ripe tomato, warm from the sun. Juice dribbles down my skin, my chin. Down in the dirt, a robin's beak finds a cricket, a beetle, a grub. Slugs are scrumptious too. See all those insects down there? Robin's having a good feast. Up in the garden, we pick cukes and zucchini, harvesting into the dark. Bats swoop through the sunflowers, and I pluck June bugs from the basil until it's time for bed. Down in the dirt, skunks work the night shift. They snuffle and dig and gobble cutworms while I sleep. Up in the garden, a praying mantis wakes to hunt mosquitoes. Nana sprays away the aphids, and I'm after a grasshopper ready to swoosh. But, snap, someone else is faster. Down in the dirt, a smooth, shining garter snake crunches on supper. Look, he's eating the grasshopper. Up in the garden, the wind grows cool. Pumpkins blush orange and sunflowers bow to September. Nana ties them together to build a house for reading. Down in the dirt, an orb weaver spins her web, strand by silken strand. She'll munch on the moths tonight. Up in the garden, colored leaves litter the squash vines, and we know the cold is coming. Hurry, hurry, hurry and harvest. There's enough for neighbors too. Down in the dirt, frantic ants gather what we leave behind. They're storing food for cooler days ahead. Up in the garden, frost draws lace on leftover leaves, where secret egg sacs hang, waiting for the warm to return. We say goodbye and spread the winter blankets. Down in the dirt, beetles burrow, ants scurry home, earthworms curl tight in the dark. When grandpa calls us in for soup, an autumn moon is rising. Up in the garden, dry, dry corn stalks tremble and the wind smells like winter. But the long, bright days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladybugs and bumblebees, earthworms and ants are hunkered down, hiding, biding their time. Dreaming of sunshine and blossoms and sprouts under the bare arms of trees and the blanketing snow, a whole new garden sleeps down in the dirt. And that's the end of that one. All right. 
So we have one last book. And I really liked this one quite a bit. I liked all three of them. But I saved this one for last because this is the one that I based our craft on this week. And this one is called Over and Under the Pond. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, Mom says? Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through, waving forests of grass, while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three. They slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, splosh under the pond. Over the pond, cattails rustle and, sush and shush in the wind. Listen close. Cutlery, cutlery! Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for his nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low-hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails and growing legs, growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step. And strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond, we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in their monster fast jaws. 
Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. Look, there's the crayfish. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto shore as a far off loon calls goodnight. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond, the prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turn frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond. And that's the end. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you get a chance and can come by the library, you can check out those books to take home. And the other thing that I have for you is I made a sheet and it's a lot of the creatures in that final book, which is the ecosystem of a pond. And a lot of those creatures live here in Idaho. So there's that. And then you pick up like a coloring sheet and you get to make your own ecosystem. Can you see that? You can color it and cut out the creatures and put them on your sheet. It's kind of fun and then you get to think about the animals and what they do and where they live and it's so neat because they're all here in Idaho where we live. Spring is coming and we'll get to see those things soon. So thank you so much for tuning in this week and I will hopefully see you next week. Take care and goodbye.